by the end of this video, you're gonna know how to hit a third shot drop so buttery that floats like a butterfly in the afternoon sky right over the net. It gives you time to get to the kitchen and neutralize the point. In other words, I'm gonna teach you how to hit a third shot <laughs> drop. <laughs> so for starters, let me give you context so we understand what even is the third shot of the rally. You're gonna serve the ball, that's the first shot. They're gonna return it, and that right there is the third shot of the rally. Now, you have a couple options when you hit your third shot. Option number one is you could hit a third shot drive. So I'm gonna serve it, it's my first. He's gonna return it, that's his second. And I'm gonna hit it hard, that's my third. One, two, and this is the third shot drive. Now, that option's fine. It's not wrong, but it's not what this video is about. This video is about the third shot drop. Many beginners only hit third shot drives. Again, it's not wrong, but you're not as dangerous as you could be if you added the variety of the third shot drop. You become very predictable when you only hit a third shot drive. And in addition, when you get to higher levels, it just won't work if you're only hitting the drive. So that's another reason to add the drop into your game. And lastly, having an effective third shot drop actually increases the threat of your drive. Because if sometimes you drop, sometimes you drive, your opponent will not know what you're about to do next. And when they're on their toes, you're uh, not on your toes and you're, <laughs> you officially have an advantage, okay? So what is the third shot drop? It's the third shot of the rally where you're hitting a drop shot that you're intending to land close to the net which will allow you time. This is all about time. So when I hit that shot, my intention is that I can move forward to the kitchen. So that's what the third shot drop is. So why is the third shot drop important? Well, in pickleball, the serving team is immediately at a disadvantage. And the reason why is when we serve the ball, we have two people back at the baseline and the opponents have one person back and one person up. The moment they return, the person runs in, they now have two people up while we have two people back, disadvantage. So we wanna even out the playing field or neutralize the point, I'll use that language. So we can do that by hitting a drop and coming forward so we can neutralize the point and get everybody back on an even playing field. That's the reason that we use the third shot drop. Now, we're gonna talk in the rest of this video, how do you actually hit a third shot drop with some consistency so you float like a butterfly and sting like a bee? Okay, there's two things to think about with hitting an effective third shot drop. And the first one is position. Before we even talk technique, let's talk about where you're standing. One of the big mistakes is after you serve the ball, you step into the court. And if I step into the court, right, I have to let the ball bounce on the way back. That's what the rule says. I cannot serve it and volley it like in tennis. So if I step in and they hit me any type of a deep return, right? So let's say I served it, boom, and I'm backing up. A lot of times that leads to a pop-up. It leads to me being on my back foot and rarely being on your back foot is a good thing in pickleball. So how do you do it? Well, when you serve it, stay where you're at and allow yourself the ability to move in. So all of your weight and momentum is moving forward. That doesn't just apply to the serve and that actually applies to most of your shots in pickleball, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna serve, I'm gonna stay, and then I'm gonna move in to hit my shot. So that's one of the biggest mistakes that I see. It's one of the biggest corrections that you can make. And if you do that, you'll immediately start having a better third shot drop. Now, many of you already know that. So let's talk about number two, and that's technique. Three things to think about with our technique. And I actually call it the three L's. Quick interruption to tell you that this video is sponsored by Selkirk. From the way they run their business to the quality of their paddles, these are my favorite paddles to use. If you wanna get a Selkirk paddle, go to selkirk.com or go to selkirklabs.com. Find the paddle you like and I got you. Use my code, insert it in at checkout and you will get a digital gift card towards a future purchase. Back to the video. The three L's of the third shot drop. The first one is loose grip. Second one is less swing. And the third one is lift the ball. When I first learned this, a lot of people were telling me like loosen up your grip. And I guess it kind of made sense, but for a long time it didn't click in my brain. I'm a believer now. It matters, okay? A lot of people hold this thing. They're like trying to get a forearm workout right here, right? And they're tightening, they're holding this thing so tight. It's actually a little bit counterintuitive. The tighter your grip, the less control you have. On the flip side, the looser your grip, the more control you have. Give it a shot. And it makes sense, like physics, right? If I hold this super tight and it comes off my thing, it's gonna bounce off like really hard. I think that's physics. If not, tell me in the comments below. I'm just trying to use smart words. <laughs> but the other truth is, if I have a looser grip, the paddle's gonna be able to take the impact. The tighter it is, the less absorption the paddle can have, because it's just gonna ricochet off. Yeah, yeah. The, light, the looser your grip, the more it can absorb into the paddle. That's like what soft hands would be. Yeah. Now, if I just explained that with a really bad articulation, I was actually thinking about it all night and I couldn't come up with anything. So if you could help me, put it in the comments below and say like, hey, here's a better way to articulate that. I'll give you a gold star and I'll use that in future. So loose grip on your swing. And if I'm working on this, I'm gonna work on it one thing at a time, right? So if Danny's right there, I'm just gonna keep my, group, my grip super loose. 
okay? Super loose. And in this video, we're gonna talk primarily about the forehand drop. I think the backhand drop is kind of a beast of its own, probably deserves its own video. But right now, my main focus is that I have an extremely loose grip on the paddle, okay? I mean, I am touching this thing with little force, okay? I want you next time when you go out and practice, I want you to actually experiment with holding the paddle really tight in your hands, all right? Number one, it's gonna kill your forearm over time. But number two, <laughs> I want you to observe how much you actually pop the ball up when you have, now, it's, Dan is giving me an easy ball, right? Even with a tight grip, I could make thirds right now. But when you have pressure on you and the ball's coming a little bit faster, the tighter you are, like people say they got tight. That's like a literal thing in pickleball. You get tight and you literally get tight. Your muscles get tight. Number one, side note, <sighs> breathe. But number two, that will help you loosen up your grip. How do you measure success? Was that a good third shot drop or not? Well, there's really one principle, which is if they're hitting up on the ball, you've hit a pretty good third shot drop. It doesn't have to bounce. If it bounces and they're still hitting up on it, that's a good thing. If they're taking it out of the air and they're still hitting up on it, that's also an okay thing. So loose grip is the first one. Now, here's the second one, less swing. The one of the biggest mistakes on the third shot drop is people taking a really big swing. And that's natural because if you've ever played tennis, you do take a pretty big swing right, to hit your shot. If you hit a third shot drive in pickleball, I actually hit it with also less swing, but a lot of players who have an effective third shot drive where the paddle actually comes out of their view. So my focus here is that I'm not gonna let the paddle get out of my view. I'm actually gonna make contact in front of my body and the paddle's never gonna go past my leg. In fact, most of the time when I hit it, I have a loose grip. I'm out of here in front, right? So notice I'm out here in front, the paddle is actually in front of my foot. Loose grip. Now, there's, again, there's a few different ways to do this. This is the way I found it useful. And like anything in any sport, like basketball, for example, Reggie Miller still made shots. You might have a different way to hit a third shot drop and it's gonna work. And if you do, that's okay. I'm just giving you some ideas to experiment with. So play with this. One side note is what do you do with your feet? Like should one foot be forward when you're hitting? Like should your right foot be forward when you're hitting? Or should your left foot be forward when you're hitting? Here's what I'm gonna say about that. Experiment for yourself. I've actually tried both many times. I haven't come to a conclusion that one is absolutely better than the other. I think at times if you have your right foot forward, it almost encourages less swing, right? Cause it's kind of weird to have your right foot forward and your paddle back. I do think if you have your left foot forward, it actually does encourage a little bit more to have your paddle go back. But of course you can train yourself to have a, a short swing with that. With that being said, in pickleball, less swing is actually a principle. It's not just a method to be using on your third shot drop. And when I say principle, but what I mean is it's something that is applicable to so many different parts of the game. Your volleys, less swing. Your drop, less swing. Your dinks, less swing. Your flicks, less swing. If you start to approach pickleball with a less swing mentality, you're gonna hit so many of your shots better in to space, give your opponents less time, all those things that'll help make you better. Here's the third L, lift the ball. Again, this is a principle to use all throughout pickleball. Lifting is one of the most important things you can do in pickleball. What often happens on third shot drops, especially with beginners, beginners is they take a, a swing that's side to side. This also happens in dinking at the kitchen. But if you take a side to side swing, what you're actually doing is, is creating a lower trajectory typically, right? If I'm here, the trajectory of the ball is gonna be smaller than if I'm lifting. Part of the reason I wanna lift is because one thing I never wanna do is hit the ball into the net. And I know this sounds obvious, but on your third shot drop, one of the most important things you can do is learn how to miss the ball high. The most important part is the apex. So the apex of the ball, you want to have in your side of the kitchen. Apex being like the top of its flight? The you mean? top of the flight, okay. yes. So if it's in your kitchen, the ball will be on its downward path coming across the net, more than likely landing in the opposite kitchen or your opponent's yeah. kitchen. If the apex is too close to the net, for example, it's here. It's still rising. It's still, as rising. It's still rising as it's coming up, yeah. This is a ball that's more likely for me to be able to, to smash. Hit. So like, let's just show that for you. So the ball is still rising as it's crossing the plane of the net, yes. that's probably bad news for us. Yes. Okay, but we should stay back. So it's like, yes. still rising. Yeah. Oh God. That was pretty good. That was a little unnecessary. <laughs> so, so, but it's also the same if the apex is actually too far away. So the ball will then already hit its top of the peak. And if not enough momentum's on the ball, it will come into the okay, net. Okay, so like if I, if I may be going for a little too much, yeah. potentially, and the apex happens outside the kitchen, 
There yeah. you go. The other thing you might ask is how high do you want the apex? Well, if you're hitting a very safe drop, maybe like eight to 10 feet, but it's gonna bounce a little bit higher, right? The higher the ball goes, the higher it bounces. You can see right here, it just bounced above the net. Yeah. I think that as you get to more advanced levels, you can't let that happen. So you gotta have a lower apex, probably right around your eyesight, right around your head height. So if I hit a drop that is so mm. high that it's gonna, what Daniel was saying, a drop that is so high, it's gonna bounce in the kitchen, which is good, but if it's gonna bounce above the net, yes. that is not necessarily the best drop in the world because then he can still hit down on it. And the thing we don't want our opponent doing is hitting down on the ball. We want everything being lifted by our opponent. So again, a tennis swing, if you're a tennis player, you have to work your way out of hitting everything, right, as a swing on your third shot drop. Because the goal for this specific shot is to hit it with enough loft that it goes over the net, that it either bounces or you force your opponent to hit up on the ball. So to do that, we want to hit with lift, with loft. Another reason that hitting it with a little more trajectory, higher trajectory is good, is because the longer the ball is in the air, the more time you have to get up to the kitchen, right? If you're hitting a quick drive or attempting to hit a quick drop, you're not allowing yourself as much time to get there. And then what's going to happen is you're going to have to hit another ball in the midcourt area. So loose grip, less swing and lift. Here's the last thing you're going to notice. My paddle tip is down towards the ground. When I learned this, this completely changed my game in so many different ways. How I speed the ball up, how I hit resets and how I hit my third shot drop before I hit the ball right notice I'm not here and this isn't this is not the only way to do it this is how I found it to be helpful I want you to try it out okay my paddle's not here okay it's literally here my elbow's pretty close to my body I'm lifting 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 so paddle tip down towards the ground, okay? Paddle out in front of my body, and I'm gonna hit with a lifting motion versus a side-to-side -side swing. So you can think about it like this. Imagine you have a, a cornhole bag. In fact, Danny is like a legendary cornhole player, but that's for another time. So I'm not gonna take a huge swing back. I'm just gonna start here. It's the motion that we're talking about. You're not flicking your wrist on your third. You're using your shoulder as more of a hinge here, right? My wrist is staying, um, my grip is loose. My wrist is pretty steady. So I'm here, so I'm here. So I'm here, so I'm here, miss high, all right? I wanna hit every ball over the net, and if I miss, I want that to happen to give myself a chance. Ah! Go ahead into the net. I'm gonna give you one more thing, it's advanced. So for those who have already learned about third shot drops, this is something I'm currently working on to add so I have a more dangerous, more threatening third shot. But real quick in summary, loose grip, less swing, lift the ball. Those three things also apply to what I'm about to teach you, which is a top spin drop. Now, I didn't learn this myself. I've had a couple people tell me this. I've worked with the coach, Jim Krimble, who's actually the first guy who ever mentioned this technique that I'm about to show you. So shout out to him. I'll link his Instagram account down in the bio, check him out. And if you go watch a lot of the pros play, you're gonna notice a lot of the pros go paddle tip down and they do this little windshield wiper motion right so it's not a big swing so some will take a big swing but they get their paddle tip down and they make this motion like this in fact wherever you're at right now just take your hand right put your hand out in front and i want you to almost like almost like you're waving to the queen right hello <laughs> yeah shaka right so it's a windshield wiper why would you even want to do this top spin drop with this windshield wiper well it puts more pressure on your opponent a lofty third which is a great place to start which is exactly where i started and still often hit depending on the ball i'm receiving from my opponent is okay. It's not a very offensive third and you don't always need offense, but it's nice to have in your tool bag. So when I add top spin, it changes the ball that Danny is able to hit, right? So if I hit a flat drop, right? All right, it's, it's soft. Danny kind of has time and space to do what he wants. But if I had a little bit of topspin to this thing, let's say I put it in a good location. Danny's not gonna be able to add a lot of topspin back to me because he has to basically change the spin on the ball. A video on that later, don't panic. But I can get more aggressive and I can come to the kitchen for a little bit of offense. Topspin. Right? And that's actually what happens a lot. Now, we, Danny over-exaggerated it slightly, but when you add topspin, a lot of times all you can do is be in a defensive, boom, position. Right? So I still have my loose grip, I have my less swing, I have my lift the ball, but now I'm gonna take this ball and I'm gonna look to generate some top spin out in front. And now the ball has some dip on it, right? And this is gonna be a harder ball for your opponent to handle. Okay? The footwork on this is very important. You might actually hit it more like a tennis stroke depending on where you're getting the ball, right? But you don't want to be caught flat-footed. Gosh, these are butter. Wow. So that's what the third shot drop is, why it's important and how to hit it. Now, if you want to see a video on how to train it, and I think most people are actually training it incorrectly. Now it's not way off, but I think I have actually a, a somewhat better way. It's more realistic to train the third shot drop. But if you want to see that, click this video.
Really quick, let's cut to that camera over there. Danny, come here. Does this look silly right now? Let's just go zoom, well, let's go zoom in on Danny. Are you pointing both cameras at each other? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs>